Hello, good morning everyone. It's Miss Kendra from Learn and Play Montessori School. I'm very happy to see you again. How's your morning going? Uh-huh, you, so you finished breakfast. You're ready to listen, listen. Fantastic. Let's say first we have a really awesome event on Friday, this Friday, and we're gonna be doing some yoga. Who likes to do yoga? You do? Good thing. Miss Kelly is gonna be leading a yoga class from 4.30 to 5 this Friday, August 14th. Okay, that's gonna be on Zoom and everyone is welcome to join. Invite your brother, sister, mom, dad, your friends. We can all do yoga together. It'll be so much fun. That's a great plan for Friday. Is today Friday? Not quite, not quite yet. Today is, what? Tuesday, that's right. And that means yesterday was what? Monday. Today is Tuesday, tomorrow is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. So, what month is it? August, thank you. So today is Tuesday, August the 11th, 2020. And before we jump into our worksheets, we are gonna be doing some drawing today and some erasing. So we need to make sure we have an extra piece of paper and pencil and eraser, okay? Maybe you already have those things, fantastic. Let's take a look at our first language worksheet today. And that is going to look like this. It's got a big cat on the front. So first thing we're gonna do is, what do you think? Can you tell me? What is the first thing we're gonna do? Write my name, thank you. I'm gonna write my name. I'm gonna write the date. And I'm going to read the directions, exactly. These directions say, underline the nouns in each sentence. So first, can you tell me what is a noun? It is a Person, good. Place, thank you. Thing or animal. Okay, so we remember a noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. So we've got four options there. So we need to underline only the noun in each sentence. So let's read this first sentence together. The cat is very fat. Okay, so there's lots of words in that sentence. We need to find the noun, the person, place, thing, or animal. Let's look at the first word. The. Is that a person, place, thing, or animal? Nope. No, it's not. What about the second word here? K at. Cat. Now, is cat a person, a place, a thing, or an animal? What is cat? That's an animal, yes, that's an animal. And an animal, that is a noun. We need to underline the nouns. Let's underline cat. Okay, how about the next word, is? Is, is a noun, person, place, or thing? No, what about the word very? Person, place, or thing? No, what about fat? 
Is that a person, place, or thing? No. The word fat is not a person, it's not a place, or a thing. So we're only underlining the noun, cat. How about the next sentence, number two? A red bird flew by. A red bird flew by. Now we're looking for the noun in the sentence. What is the person, place, thing, or animal in the sentence? Which word is that? A red? Is that a person? A place? A thing? An animal? No. What about a fl flu? Is that a person, place, thing, or animal? No. Bird? Person, place, thing, or animal? Yeah, that's an animal. Let's underline bird. That's a noun. Very good. Let's look at number three. Can you read this sentence with me? Is that a new store? Is that a new store? Now, which word here is a noun? A person, place, thing, or animal? Is, no, that, no, a, no, that's not a noun. New, is new a person, a place, thing, animal? What about store? Is that a person? Is that a place? Is store a place? Can you go to the store? Yeah, the store is a place. Let's underline store. Fantastic. Let's do number four. The teacher came in. The teacher came in. So where do we see the noun? The person, place, thing, or animal? The, no. Teacher? Is the teacher a person, a place, a thing, or animal? Yeah, the teacher's a person. That's right, the teacher is a person. We're gonna underline teacher. And came? Is that a person, place, thing, or noun? No. How about in? No. Teacher is the noun. Good job. We have a few more. Let's do one more together here, and then we're going to take a look at our reader. Let's do number five. Is that your bag? Is that your bag? Where do we see the noun? What word are we going to underline? Are we going to underline is? No. That? What is that? Is that a noun? No. What about the word your? Is that a person, place, thing, or animal? Nope. What about bag? A bag. Is the bag a noun? Is that a person? A place? A thing? Is that a thing? Is a bag a thing? Yeah, bag's a thing. Let's underline bag. Super. We're doing fantastic. Let's take another look at this later. We can finish six, seven, and eight later and take a look at our reader. I'm going to cover my answers. Did you cover your answers? Super. Let's do one on this side and one on the other side. Let's, let's look at this first one. Let's read together here. Sam 
has a pet. Sam has a pet. Fantastic. Good news for Sam. Let's read the next sentence. Nip is Sam's pet. Nip is Sam's pet. We're missing a letter here in, in Sam's. What makes the ah sound? Ah. Sam. Ah. Ah. Yeah, let's put an A there. Thank you very much. Okay. And what about the next sentence? Will you read this with me? Awesome. Is Sam's pet a cat? Well, what are we looking at here? Is Sam's pet a cat? Does this look like a cat to you? Not so much. Not so much. Are we going to circle yes or no? Is Sam's pet a cat? Yes or no? No. No, it's not. It is a what? Nip is what? A dog. Yeah, a dog. And a dog does not usually look like a cat. I'm going to, if we can finish the rest of those later, let's jump to the next page. First one up top here. Sam pats Nip or Tab. Now we met Nip, right? Nip is Sam's dog. Yeah, you remember Nip is Sam's dog. This one says Sam pats Nip or Tab. What do we see here? Who is Sam patting? Nip, his dog. That's right. Let's circle Nip. Okay. Let's look at the next sentence here. Is Nip Sam's pet? Well, what do you think? Do you remember? Is Nip Sam's pet? Yes or no? Yes. It he is. Let's circle. Yes. And let's read this last one here in this box. Tab is Anne's what? Tab is Anne's pet. What is that beginning sound? P, P. What letter are we missing there? A P. Thank you very much. Let's write that letter here. P. P pet. Good job, you guys. Okay. Let's finish the rest of this later and jump on over to our penmanship. The penmanship today is all about our community helper that we're going to talk about. It's the, the vet, short for veterinarian. So I'm going to put my name up top here. Do you remember my name? Mm-hmm, Miss Kendra, that's right. And we have three letters here and a word. We have V, E, T, and the word vet. All right, so let's start with our V, our big V. We are going to start at the top line and follow the arrow. We're going to go down to the bottom and back up to the top. Super. Okay, and our lowercase v in our cursive handwriting is going to start at the bottom line. It's going to go up halfway, around, back down to the bottom, then back up halfway again, and out to the next letter. Now, sometimes I think, oh, this v looks like a letter u. But the cursive letter U is, is different. It starts at the bottom line, 
and it goes up and down and up and then back out to the next letter. The V goes around and out to the next letter. It's a little different. Okay, but we are going to be using a big V, so let's practice our big V over here. And down and back up. And then let's take a look at our E's. Our big E looks like a backwards three. Let's start from the top. Go around halfway. Around again, all the way down to the bottom and out to the next letter. Super. Let's do our little E. Start to the bottom line. Goes up halfway around and out to the next letter. Okay, I'm going to practice my small E over here. Fantastic. And our big T with some big news, we're going to start down here. And then we make a hook, come back up to the top, and I'm trying to follow these arrows. I'm not positive. Let's do our little T. All the way up, back down, out to the next letter, and then we got to remember to come back and cross the T. And our little T starts at the bottom line, goes up, down, back out to the next letter, come back, and across your T. Okay, let's try the word vet. Big V, start at the top, all the way down, back up all the way. We're ready to start our ET. That's our V and our E. Starts at the bottom line, around, back up back down and come back and cross the T. So sometimes our big letters are not going to always connect with our little letters. Cursive is funny. Awesome, you guys. Okay, are you guys feeling like some math? You are? Well, guess what I have for you? Math. Some skip counting by fives are what we're gonna look at first. Then we're gonna be back looking at our clock. So let's sit down and do some skip counting by fives. I know you guys are experts. So let's look at this worksheet. I have my name on there already. And these directions say, skip count by five and write the missing numbers. So we can skip count by five. You ready with me? Five. 10, what? 15, excellent. Let's write 15, 20, 25, excellent. And then what's after 25? We're counting by fives. 30, you're fast, okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Excellent. 35, 40. What goes here? 45. Wow, okay. 50 then. 55. Last. 60, thank you. So we know we can count to fives even higher, 65, 70. But these numbers are the fives that we're gonna see on our clock. So if you can see, we have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, our big numbers. But you can see inside are some smaller numbers. Do you notice anything? Here is zero, zero. So when our minute hand is here and we're writing the time, we write, this would be five colon zero, zero. And then let's count by fives with me. Ready? 
five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and this would be 60. But when we write the time, we don't write 360. We'd go to the next number. We'd write 4 o'clock. It goes 359, 4 o'clock. So these numbers, these small numbers, are for the minute hand. And the bigger numbers will look to the hour hand, the shorter one. The minute hand is longer. You remember that? So where this minute hand is pointing is going to tell us how many minutes past the hour. So if we are here at one o'clock, it's one, zero, zero. If we are at 115, we have to, the minute hand will be to the three, the 15 here. So here is 115. What about if it is here? If the minute hand is down here at the six, this will be 130. You remember that? This is one o'clock, and this is 130. And if our minute hand is over here at the nine, we have 45 minutes after the hour. Pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at our clocks and do some of these together. So I'm gonna find the time here and then I'm gonna make it match my big clock. Okay, so here I see the minute hand is down at the six. Okay, and the hour hand is past the eight. So what time do we see here? I see this hour hand is at the, here. It's after the eight. So I know the hour is eight. So I'll put the eight and the colon there. How many minutes after eight is it? Thirty, yeah, when the minute hand is down at the six, it's 30 minutes after. 30, this clock says 8.30. Now let's look at the next clock. The next clock, where's the minute hand? The long minute hand is at the, the nine. Okay, so let's get that minute hand over there, the nine, but where's the hour hand? Is it past the six or it's past the five? Okay, so now we know what is the hour? What is, where's the hour hand? It's after the five. Okay, so I know the hour is five, and then colon, and then how many minutes after five o'clock is it? 45. When the minute hand is at the nine, it's 45 minutes after the hour. Super, 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 super. Let's take a look at, uh, how about this one? We'll do this one, this one later. We're gonna look at this one. Let's see where's the hour hand. Really close, a little bit after the four. And where's the minute hand? Pointing at the three, thank you very much. Okay, so what hour are we in? What's the hour? 
Is it five? No, it's four. The hour is four. And then we're going to write a colon. And the minute hand is not at the 12, not at the 6, not at the 9, it's at the, the 3. 5, 10, 15. 15 minutes after the hour. Here the clock shows 4, 15. Excellent job. Let's do two more on the next page. Here we go. Okie dokes. Now I'm looking at the first one. The hour hand is after the 12. And the minute hand, the long hand, is down at the 6. So what time do we have? The hour is 12, thank you. 12.30, you guys, excellent job, 12.30. Let's do one more here, let's do the next one. The hour hand is where? After the four. And the minute hand is at the the nine. So what time are we looking at here? Four. Thank you. How many minutes after four? 45. Excellent job, you guys. 45. Feeling good. Super. Let's take another look at these later. Let's stand up and sing a song together. One of our community helpers this week is a veterinarian. So we have our veterinarian song. Are you ready to sing with me? Awesome. Let's do it. One, two, three. I'm a vet, I'm a vet, I'm a veterinarian. I take care of the animals and I treat them one by one. I give shots, I set legs, and sometimes I operate. I take care of the animals because I think they are just great. Bring your dogs, bring your cats, bring your hamsters one by one. I take care of the animals. I'm a veterinarian. Awesome. Can you guys tell me what does a veterinarian do? What is their job? Yeah, they help the animals. Yeah, they help animals stay healthy, help them when they are sick. Did you know there's so many different kinds of veterinarians? Yeah, there's the kind that take care of our pets, our small pets, like, ha like a dog or a cat or a hamster. But what about big animals? What about like elephants and tigers? Sometimes they need a doctor too. And so they can go to, or a veterinarian can come to them and help them how they need. Like a veterinarian that helps farm animals has to drive their way to the farm to help the cows and the horses. Or maybe a veterinarian works at the zoo and helps animals like lions and tigers and elephants there's lots of different kinds. One of the things that a veterinarian can do is take x-rays, right? X-rays will show what? What will an x-ray show you? Will it show you my brain? Will it show you my stomach? The bones, yeah, the x-ray will show the bones. Let's take a look at some of these cool x-rays did you know that a turtle had bones like that? Look at that turtle's hand flipper bone. That looks like my hand bones. 
Interesting. How about a frog? Did you know frogs had that many bones? Looks like frogs have ribs, just like you and me too. Cool. What about a dog that's having babies? You can see in the belly here, there's two little puppies growing inside there. And a veterinarian may help to deliver those little puppies and make sure they're nice and healthy. Let's take a look at our veterinarian worksheets. So, what we have here today, the first thing we're looking at here is color the picture and write the sentence below. So, I'm gonna write my name up top and the date. Now, I'm gonna color the picture later, but I'm really happy to see your coloring and we can finish that later. Let's write the sentence we see below on these two lines. Can you read this sentence with me? The vet is a doctor who takes care of animals. The vet is a doctor who takes care of animals. Let's write that sentence on the line. Okay, we're gonna write the, and since the is at the beginning of the sentence, it's got a big T. Vet, V-E-T, a vet. Is that a noun? Is the vet a person? Yeah, that's a noun, yeah. And vet is short for veterinarian, right? Yeah, a vet, the vet is a doctor. Is that another noun? Is the doctor, is a doctor a noun? Yeah, that's another noun. Sometimes a sentence will have more than one. That's okay. The vet is a doctor who takes, takes, is that a noun? Is that a person? A place? A thing? Animal? Nope, takes is not a noun. The vet is a doctor who takes care of animals. Animals, that's another noun. Awesome. Okay. Good work. If you're not finished writing this sentence, you can pause Miss Kendra and finish writing the sentence, or you can put it to the side and finish later. So in your packet today, in your worksheets, we have this doctor coat and these pictures. It would be fun to write your name here and glue and paste it, cut and paste it onto your veterinarian jacket. Let's do that later at home. Okay, today I want to try making our own vet x-ray. How are we going to do that? How are we going to make an x-ray? out of the paper like this. Well, it's gonna look something like this because when we take an x-ray, it's very dark in the back and then the bones are white. So for this, we need a pencil and a blank paper and an eraser. Do you have those things? Great. First, we need to color the whole paper. Now, if we shade the whole paper like this, say I'm done, we're not gonna be able to see the animal. 
So when we're shading the paper, we wanna make sure there is no more white, that it's all covered. And if it's really dark, that's okay. That's no problem. We're gonna erase to make it white. So let's start here and let's color our whole paper. Okay, I'm trying to think what kind of animal do I want to do an x-ray? Big animal, small animal, I'm not sure. What kind of animal are you thinking? That's a good idea. Maybe we'll try that. And maybe if I really like it, maybe I'll make a whole bunch, a whole bunch of different animals, a bunch of different x-rays. Okay. So there's not too many white spots anymore. So I'm ready to make our animal. You ready? Fantastic. So here I try to make like a dog. I'm thinking something different. What should we try here? Yeah, I want to try a little frog. I think that little frog was cute. So I'm going to flip it this way and try to make a frog. Okay. So I see there's the spine. Goes all the way down. Just like you and me, the frog has a spine that goes all the way down. All right. We've got a spine. And it also has a skull, that's this head, the head, the frog head. So I'm gonna try to make that shape. It looks like a little bit like a triangle. So I'm going to try to make that shape here. And I see there's two little holes to make space for eyes. Okay, it's got one eye, I'll take it. And if we mess up, we can fix it with some more shading, that's okay. So I see my frog has ribs across its spine, just like you and me. So I'm going to give this frog some ribs. Can you see those ribs? Yeah, pretty cool. What about arms and legs? We have to add the arms and legs. So let's give it some arms. And it's got lots of long fingers. And needs one more arm. The frog has two and lots of long fingers. Okay. So we got most of the body. We're missing something real important. A frog can't hop without his legs, without his legs. So I'm gonna give him his legs to hop. And those long toes. And a second leg. A long toes. Now we used eraser, so we have to dust this off a little bit. And now, it's my frog x-ray. Fantastic. And you guys can make any animals out of this. Anything you want. You could even make a human x-ray. Maybe we'll try that. Really great job, you guys. It was fun to hear about our veterinarian. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. And have a really good day. Bye-bye.